we want to use the rational zeros or rational roots theorem to find the possible real rational zeros of the polynomial function given here. Well, the rational zeros theorem tells us that if r is a rational zero of the polynomial function f of x, then r is in the form of plus or minus p divided by q, where p is a factor of the constant term a sub zero, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. So going back to our example, we'll begin by listing all the factors of the constant term 15, and then we'll list all the factors of the leading coefficient 6, and then we'll find the unique rational numbers that we can form, giving us our possible rational zeros. And we'll consider both the positive and negative factors. So for 15, we'd have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15. These are the integers that divide evenly into 15. And then for the factors of 6, we'd have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. So all the possible rational zeros must come from, must come from the unique rational numbers of the factors of 15 divided by the factors of 6. So now let's list the unique possible rational zeros. So we have plus or minus one over one, that'd just be plus or minus one. Next we'd have plus or minus one over two, or plus or minus one half. Next we have plus or minus one over three, or plus or minus one third. And then plus or minus one over six, or plus or minus one sixth. Now I'll move to the three. Plus or minus three over one, that'd be just plus or minus three. Plus or minus three over two, that's plus or minus three halves. Notice next we have plus or minus three over three, that'd be plus or minus one, which we already have listed, so we won't list it again. Next we'd have plus or minus three over six, which would be plus or minus one half, which again we already have, so we'll skip that. Now we'll move to the five, so we have plus or minus five over one, or plus or minus five. Plus or minus five over two, or plus or minus five halves. Next we have plus or minus five over three, or plus or minus five thirds. Then we have plus or minus five over six, or plus or minus five six. And then finally we'll move to the fifteen. Plus or minus fifteen over one is plus or minus fifteen. Next we have plus or minus fifteen over two, or plus or minus fifteen halves. Next we have plus or minus fifteen over three, that's plus or minus five, which we already have listed. And then finally we have plus or minus fifteen over six, which simplifies to plus or minus five halves, which we already have listed. So this is the list of all possible rational zeros. And now our question asks us, according to the rational roots theorem, which of the following does not represent a possible pair of rational zeros for this function? Well, plus or minus one half is listed, so is plus or minus one third, so is plus or minus five thirds, but notice plus or minus five eighths is not listed because it's not a possible rational zero. And therefore, plus or minus five eighths is our answer. Of course, a much easier way to identify the rational zeros of a polynomial function would be to graph the polynomial function and look for the x-intercepts that are rational. For example, if we graph our polynomial function, here it is, notice how there are three x-intercepts and therefore we have three real zeros, one here, one here, and one here. It does appear that all three are real and rational. Here we have a zero of x equals three. Here we have a zero of x equals one half. This one's harder to tell, but this x-intercept is negative five-thirds. And notice all three of these zeros do appear in the list of possible rational zeros. I hope you found this helpful.